This is part four in a series entitled uh, Supernatural Revelations. You know, uh, a big key for me is to simply spend time with the Father, to spend time with Jesus, and to spend time with the Holy Spirit. And, uh, you know, Second Corinthians 13 and 14 says, Now may the love of God, amen, the grace of the Lord Jesus, and the uh, fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And see, when you fellowship with the Holy Spirit, the grace of Jesus is released into your life. And when you fellowship with the Holy Spirit, not only will you experience the grace of the Lord Jesus, but you will experience the precious and, and, and wonderful uh, love of the Father. And so one of the keys to walking and living in supernatural revelations is to simply take time with the Father. <coughs> now, let me say this to you. Because many times, um, those of us who've been saved by Jesus, filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, we want to move in the gifts of the Spirit. But allow me to say this. Moving in the gifts of the Spirit uh, do not make you uh, spiritual. Amen. Uh, they do not make you uh, special. Um, moving in the gifts of the Spirit do not make you mature. Amen. Um, so... You know, uh, it doesn't make you better than folk uh, who do not move in the gifts of the Spirit. It, it doesn't mean that you have arrived. Amen. The gifts of the Holy Spirit do not have anything whatsoever to do with you. The gifts are the goodness of God for other people. And so you may say, well, I want to move in the gifts and uh, I want to move in anointings. Well, it's according to your assignment. <coughs> and... Um, um, any saved person, any person who's been filled with the Holy Spirit can move in any of the gifts of the Spirit. And so your gifts, uh, your calling and your assignment uh, are, are not the same thing. For example, your calling and your assignment, uh, your office, um, <laughs> your, your leadership have to do with who you are. Amen. Your gifting and anointing have to do with what you're doing. And uh, so you have, it's about what you do. And so, um, what, what's my calling? My calling is to be a son of God. Amen. And, and to know the Father, to know Jesus, to know the Holy Spirit. And my calling is eternal. Uh, to walk with God forever. Amen. Amen. Um, <laughs> that's what I want to do for a living, is to simply walk with God. But now, my, my, my gifting my anointing uh, is to fulfill the specific thing that the Father wants to do through me to bring uh, heaven's benefits and blessings to others. Now, every believer can lead people to Jesus. Every believer can bring healing to the sick. Every believer can expel demons. Every believer can get other folk filled with the Holy Spirit. And every believer can do that. Amen. And, uh, of, of course, there will be those who seem like they do it more than others. But um, every single one of us have this particular privilege of revealing Jesus as Lord and Savior. Amen. Healer, deliverer, protection, baptizer in the Spirit. So, you know, um, there's a difference between leadership and ministry. Amen. Amen. Uh, leadership and government are about what you do with people. And ministry is about what you do to people. And so leadership requires maturity. Ministry simply requires uh, gifting and anointing. And so it's very important that we understand that gifts do not govern, but elders govern, leaders govern. Why? Because of wisdom, because of humility, because of uh, revelation, and because of, of, of maturity. And so the focus of leaders will be uh, certain things. For example, uh, allow me to say this to you. Uh, uh, um, Proverbs 29 and 18 says this, where there's no vision, people perish. Where they have no revelation, they lose self-control. And so I must have the vision of God for my life. And what's the vision of God for my life? <clears throat> it's the revelation of God for my personal life. 
If I'm married, I need the revelation of God for my marriage. If I have children, I need the revelation of God for my children. I need the revelation of God for my occupation, for my career, for my profession. I need the revelation of God for my finances. I need the revelation of God for my church if I'm a pastor or a leader. I need the revelation of God for my ministry. What is revelation? It's all about where are you going? So revelation is foresight. It's where you're going. Okay? And so when I think about revelation, I'm thinking about where I'm going. And it isn't what I choose. It's what the Father chooses for me and that I must agree with. And so when I think about revelation, it is foresight. It's where I'm going. But you know what? I'll never get there. I will never get there unless I receive a Romans 12 gift of ruling, which has to do with leadership. It has to do with administration. It has to do with wisdom. And so... I must get more than a revelation of where I'm going. I must get a revelation of the sequential steps I need to take in order to get there. And that's insight. That's wisdom. That's divine order. So this is why the Hebrew songbook, the prophet says in Psalm 119, uh, 133, O Lord, uh, in your word, order my steps and let no sin have dominion over me. You see, whenever I, I encounter a person who has vision, but they have no revelation of administration, this person always ends up in frustration because they, they, they have a word about where they're going, but they don't have a word about the sequential steps they need to take in order to turn vision into reality. And so one of the reasons we need to understand supernatural revelations is that it's not enough for me to have foresight. I must have insight. I must know the sequential steps that the Father tells me in order to turn revelation into reality. And so the focus of leaders will be vision and administration. And it will be communication. You know, the, the Bible talks about how you are to communicate every good thing that God has put on the inside of you through his son Jesus. And so um, one of the big keys is communication. And uh, so I want you to understand, amen, that as a leader, uh, you'll be interested in vision, administration, and communicating uh, the will of the Father. And so uh, in all these areas, uh, your, your personal vision, you, you need an administration from God for that. Your, your marital uh, uh, vision. You need, you need the sequential steps on how to make that work successfully. Uh, in terms of uh, raising children, you need to get a vision of that and the wisdom on how to raise your kids so that they know Jesus intimately. Again, your finances, your church, and your ministry. And, and, and you have to communicate. Then the next thing that leaders are into is discipleship. One of the reasons, one of the big reasons I'm doing this, these series of teachings is because I want you to know Jesus deeply and intimately. I mean, Philippians 3.10 says, and Paul says this, that I might know God intimately and deeply in the fellowship of his sufferings, in the power of his resurrection. Amen. I'm going to be conformed to his death. So, so I'm going to know God even if I'm going through difficulty. I want to know God even when I'm dying to self. And then I want to know God when I experience the power of his resurrection, his resurrection life. And so um, remember the scripture that we started with in Daniel 11.32, that there will be a people in the last days who will know God and be strong and will do exploits. Uh, you know, there's a prophetic scripture in Isaiah that says, I and the children that God has given me are for signs and wonders. And so leaders are into a leadership identification, leadership development, leadership release, and then you oversee leaders. You, you develop emerging leaders. And so the focus of leadership is the development of godly character and humility and maturity. 
The focus of anointing and gifting and ministry is meeting the needs of people. <coughs> so I want you to understand these differences. The two walk together to fulfill the will and the plan of the Father. And so don't confuse, don't confuse your ultimate destiny with your ultimate assignment. You see, uh, my us ultimate destiny is to go to heaven, okay? But my ultimate assignment is to bring heaven to earth, okay? And as a consequence, I bring people into heaven, okay? By giving them an encounter uh, with Jesus. So, um, then, then, then this begs the question, uh, why do I preach? Why do I teach? Well, you preach and teach for several reasons. One, you can preach and teach to give people information. Number two, you can preach and teach to give people revelation. And those things are important. But many times when I'm preaching and teaching, I'm trying to preach a person into an encounter with Jesus. I'm trying to teach a person into an encounter with Jesus. And, um, and the reason for that is because um, <laughs> regardless of how good I teach, in the end, you're going to need to experience Jesus. No matter how good I preach, in the end, you need to experience Jesus. You need more of Jesus in your life and more of Jesus in your ministry so that you can minister to more people and bring them to Jesus. You see, <coughs> um, I am preaching revelation so that you can have an encounter with Jesus so that he can bring you into transformation. Okay? And so I am teaching Jesus, again, so you can have a revelation that will bring a manifestation of Jesus into your life that will cause transformation in your personal life. <coughs> and then when you go out and you minister to Jesus, it will bring transformation into the lives of others. And so allow me to say this. Allow me to say this. Um, you must overcome fear. And you must overcome inaction. And uh, the way you overcome fear and inaction is by taking an action based upon the Word of God. And so a lot of people are afraid to fail. Please allow me to say this to you. <coughs> I have witnessed Jesus cause the blind to see instantly, the deaf to hear instantly. I've seen cripples walk, the lame walk. I've seen the paralyzed healed by Jesus. And allow me to say this to you. I've seen cancers disappear. I've seen people supernaturally lose weight, grow arches. I've seen all kinds of dental miracles. <coughs> but let me tell you the secret. There's something I've learned. I don't take credit when they get healed, and I don't take blame when they don't. Because if you're going to take the credit, you're going to take the blame. And if you're going to take the blame, you're going to take the credit. And you don't have the right to take either. And when you get to the point where your ego is not attached to this, then you are free. And so if something happens, praise the Lord. And if something doesn't happen, then people feel love because you took the time to pray for them and to minister to them. There is no losing. You know, I think faith is spelled R-I-S-K. <coughs> and people don't understand that you take the risk, okay? But it's not very much of a risk when you're free, okay? And you just begin to get to the point where you just say, hey, you know what? I'm just going to do what the Word says, and let's just see what happens. And it's amazing when you're free how many miracles you'll see. Supernatural revelation.